This is the F-35 Lightning II, the Air Force's newest and most technologically advanced fighter jet. It can fly at supersonic speeds as fast as 1,200 miles per hour, has an exterior coated in a radar absorbent stealth material, making it virtually undetectable on enemy radar, and combines a weapon system with the most advanced sensor suite ever installed on a fighter jet, allowing the F-35 to both control and dominate the battlefield. Well, today I'm here at Hill Air Force Base with the 388th Fighter Wing to show you all about the F-35's incredible capabilities and also witness its maneuvers firsthand during a full flight demonstration. So, you better strap in and get ready, because this is the F-35. Lightning 01, you are cleared for takeoff. All right, here we go. Lightning 50 is cleared for takeoff. It's showtime. Prepare for frame thunder. Hey, I'm Major Kristen Beowulf, the commander of the F-35A demonstration team, and we're here at Hill Air Force Base, Utah, with the F-35A, the Air Force's premier uh, fifth-generation stealth fighter. Well, I think there are a lot of people out there, including myself, who would give just about anything to be able to experience flying this thing. What's it like being at the controls of an aircraft so advanced and so powerful? Yeah, I usually break it down to people in simple terms. It's pretty much like you're at the helm of a roller coaster. You're on all single seat models, so uh, you're the only one out there, and you're pretty much you know right up front on the front front seat of a roller coaster, um, but you're at the controls the whole time. We hear that term fifth generation being thrown around a lot. I know that's a pretty elite class of aircraft to, to be called that, but what exactly makes something fifth gen? Uh, fifth gen, our bread and butter is stealth. Um, so stealth technology means we can get in closer to the enemy. We can shoot our missiles, drop our bombs before we're targeted, um, which is kind of, we can roll back those, you know, stout de air defenses, ground systems. Um, and our primary mission is being a multi-role seed fighter. So suppression of enemy air defense. In front of the fighter, the pointy nose is kind of where most of the magic happens. So it's where a lot of the technology lives. Um, obviously single seat, um, but really you know, got the radar in front, so huge powerful AESA radar uh, that can target multiple air-to-air -air and air-to-surface tracks at the same time. Um, kind of everybody's favorite part is going to be these DAS cameras. So uh, a IR camera in there, there's six of them around the aircraft fusing a 360 degree video uh, that you can put onto your visor. Um, that's what allows you to see through the jet, see through yourself as you're flying around. Um, it's actually meant as a missile warning system, but I like to tell people we use it as a night vision backup as well. Uh, since at IR you can see in pitch dark, you can see the clouds, the mountains, other jets. Um, under the chin, you'll see our uh, EOT system, so electrical optical, different wave of IR, uh, but that's kind of what we use similar to like a sniper or a lightning pod uh, to generate targets on the ground, uh, to track air-to-air -air targets, and uh, we send coordinates from that to the bombs, and that is what allows us to do deliberate targeting uh, or dynamic targeting of moving uh, targets via laser-guided bombs. And I've really heard the F-35 called like a supercomputer with wings, and it can kind of like control and dominate the battlefield, right? So. Is that's what it's designed for, right? To be kind of that one platform that can do everything? Uh, I mean, over as a four ship, yeah, we have a lot of capability to spread, you know, 60 miles wide, control a lot of um, basically situational awareness of the battle space and pass that along to either fourth string counterparts or people that are making decisions out there. Uh, a lot of that is through the radar, uh, where we're picking up targets and passing it to other people. Uh, a lot of that is through all these, you know, panels, you start taking them off, they're huge supercomputers and uh, big old things that, you know, I don't even know how to work on, but um, big sensors throughout every single, basically, skin of the airplane. Everybody's favorite part of fighters is probably the weapons. Um, so the A model of the F-35 is the only one that has an actual internal cannon or gun. So you can see that up on the left intake of the jet. Um, 181 rounds of 25 mic mic or millimeter. Um, so bigger than a general you know, fourth generation fighter carries, but smaller than an A-10. Um, but we can set a burst round limiter, which is my favorite part, because you can set, you know, squeeze the trigger as long as you want. Only 20 bullets come out or however many you designate. Uh, so it allows you to be, uh, have six or seven good shots out of the, out of the gun. Um, up under, you can kind of see the weapon bay doors open. That's where uh, all the big magic happens. So we can carry up to 2,000 pound bombs all the way down to 250 pound bombs. Uh, it just depends on the variety of the mission. Uh, so I said seed is kind of our primary mission. Uh, so if we're going after a you know, hardened target, a bunker tank, we might use the 2,000 pounder versus eight little targets. We can kind of designate eight little bombs to go 70 miles out um, and strike eight different things. So that's pretty dynamic and pretty cool for us. Uh, one of the most advanced uh, flight control systems in, you know, really the world um, in conjunction with what the Raptor has is called a fly-by-wire system. So a little bit more advanced than what the Viper has, the F-16. Uh, but really what that means is every input via stick and throttle from the pilot is a request. Um, and I just ask the airplane, you know, 
pull, give me all you got, roll left as fast as you can, or you know, whatever. Uh, and the airplane's gonna do any combination of flight controls to make that happen. It's not like flying you know, a Cessna or an actual hydraulic airplane. Uh, so what that means is, one, it's pretty maneuverable, um, but also it le lends a lot of stability to the airplane as well. So what you can see you know, when I fly the demo, uh, particularly in the slow speed, as people think it's a really hard maneuver and I'm working my butt off, but in the actuality, I just freeze the airplane at 30 degrees nose high and the airplane's flight controls are doing all the work. And so that's what you can kind of see with the trailing edge flaps, the stabs, uh, the horizontal tails doing all that work to keep the airplane straight and level and stable. And you mentioned the F-22 Raptor. She's one of the very few select pilots that have flown two fifth generation fighters, both the F-22 and the F-35. What would you say are some of those kind of differences between the two? Yeah, still fifth generation fighters, um, but really obviously the F-22 has two motors, uh, super maneuverable, the thrust factoring is a really big deal. Um, and it's got a, just a bigger platform, so it's really, you know, the king of dogfighting. Um, versus when you transition to the F-35, about 10 years newer, still very maneuverable, but shorter, smaller, uh, but it can carry larger payload, which is important. So we can carry 2,000 pound bombs, they carry 1,000, and really they can carry eight missiles internal, we're at four. So a little more air-to-air -air dominated, we're a little more air-to-ground centric. So here we are at the business end of the jet. So the most powerful fighter engine ever built, the Pratt Whitney F-135, uh, about 43,000 pounds of thrust coming out of it when uh, we're in AB, which is pretty much all 13 minutes of the demo. Um, but really what this, the super reliability means that I don't have to you know, worry about you know, the engine failing um, while I'm flying either out in the range or during the demo. I can just rely on all that thrust whenever I want it. So. And there's actually more thrust in the aircraft itself weighs, right? And that is that what kind of allows you to literally spin and do the, all the crazy maneuvers? Or? <laughs> yeah, so with 43,000 pounds of thrust, I get down to 43 gross weight around you know, two minutes into the demo. So from that point on, you know, you're know you accelerating faster than you can handle. So uh, it's a lot, especially down at sea level or out you know over a beach show. So I know not everyone may know, there's actually three different variants of the F-35, right? The A, B, and C. Can you kind of talk us through a little bit of those key differences between the three? Yeah, so what you see here is the A model Air Force variant, uh, conventional takeoff on land, just like a normal airplane. Uh, the B model is what the Marines generally fly, so that's the uh, stole variant, short takeoff, vertical land, that's the one that hovers. Um, and then the C model is the carrier variant, so that's the one that gets shot off via the catapult, off of the aircraft carriers, and then lands via the arresting cable on the ship. So someone that's flown this for so long, any kind of desire to, to get in the, a V model and hover? Or? Uh, I've done it in the sim. And it's okay. actually pretty stable and really easy. It's not like the Harrier where you're working uh, all the flight controls, but uh, it's pretty simple. It's a button. Just one button yeah, and hover one mode. One button, hover mode. That's sick. Do you ever just look back and be like, I'm in a rocket alien space? I mean, I feel like that's crazy. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it feels kind of surreal because you're on the very front edge. So it's yeah. not like you see the rest of the plane until you know another F-35 pulls up next to you and you're like, that's pretty awesome. You know, we're flying a really uh, badass fighter jet. So I know you're taking off for a demo flight here in just a little bit, which we can't wait to see, but I've got to ask, what is your favorite maneuver? Uh, standard fighter pilot answer, it depends uh, <laughs> on where we are, you know, what the environmentals are, the clouds, the weather, beach show, uh, the, you know, the crowd. But I'd say probably the inverted pass, uh, just because it is so dumb and unnatural as a fighter pilot uh, to be upside down 300 feet above the ground, um, kind of looking straight down at the runway, you're like, I am crazy. Um, so it's fun to fly uh, and it's fun for the crowd to see. Well, thanks so much for the walk around of the F-35 and we'll be looking for that maneuver. Absolutely. Here we are at the aircrew flight equipment section of the 388th Operational Support Squadron at Hill Air Force Base. And you can think of this area sort of like a locker room, but for fighter pilots. Just like your favorite sports team might need an area to gear up before a big game, the same thing applies to F-35 pilots. This is where they store gear like their G-suits, survival vests, and their most important piece of gear, the helmet. Now I wanted to show you this helmet up close because it's pretty incredible. And in fact, it's the most high-tech fighter pilot helmet ever built, and it's actually integrated into the jet itself. It replaces the traditional heads-up display that you might see on an older aircraft, and instead displays all of the flight data a pilot might need right here on the visor itself. Things like your airspeed, altitude, heading, warning systems, and targeting information is all right here for the pilot whenever they need it. It even has built-in night vision goggles and can project a real-time image by accessing a series of cameras placed all around the aircraft, including letting the pilot look down and see through the bottom of the aircraft itself. 
And what I think is the most impressive part is that every single helmet is custom fit for each pilot. This is done through a multi-day, multi-step process, and for everything on the helmet to function properly, it has to be perfectly aligned and precisely fit. All right, so what I have for you right now is uh, everything below the neck that the pilot is gonna be wearing. So we got the G-Su right here. Um, this is made to combat the G-forces and force the blood where it needs to go so that they don't lose consciousness. Um, over here, we got the survival jacket. So as you can see right here, these are uh, survival components. They're gonna have their flares, flashlights, tourniquets, uh, GPS, everything you're gonna need for um, if the pilot ever needs to eject. Um, and then uh, obviously the oxygen mask, which is going to um, hook into the aircraft and provide that oxygen that they're going to need. Also, I have an LPU, which we usually install onto the jacket. And um, I would like Sam to demonstrate the use of this. So, yeah, I've actually, because do they wear these just over water at all times? Like, uh, usually over water if they're doing uh, missions over water. Gotcha. So, yeah, and so. The pilot, if they eject over water, this right. is what keeps them afloat, right? And it does. You say they have to manually pull these to inflate? Is that yeah, how it so works? Yeah, so you're just going to yank yank it down and then... Right. Uh, Here I go. Do I need to be like prepped or something? Uh, no, I'll just give you your space. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whoa. <laughs> there we go. I'm afloat. That was scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like cold too. Sweet. So what I have for you is the F-35 helmet, and uh, I have it powered up for you, so what I'm gonna have you do is throw it on and have you see what pilots see POV. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is close the visor for you, and then you're gonna be able to see those symbologies that are displayed in front of you. Yeah, and I talked about it earlier, right? So this is quite literally everything the pilot needs, right? Instead of having a big, hunky you know, night vision goggles or heads-up display, is it all right here? Yeah, all the information that you're gonna need is gonna be displayed on the visor if they need it. And uh, the cool thing is that this helmet is gonna sync to the jet. So it's gonna provide that basically VR function where you're gonna be able to specifically just look through the jet and uh, have a 360 degree view. Now for those watching, this helmet's actually quite comfortable, you know? I, right. I don't know how heavy it is, but I feel like it's pretty, pretty well built. And yeah, I mean, this is, I guess, the future right here. That it was is. what it was designed for, to kind of do everything, right? Yep, so a fully built helmet is gonna weigh around five pounds. So it's gonna help with those Gs that the pilot's gonna be pulling. It's super light, all carbon fiber, and it's super durable, so. And I saw some pilots kind of have them customized with their call sign and logo. Is they that do. you guys who do that, or how does that work? <laughs> uh, they do that themselves, so it's, it's a, it gives them a little bit of uh, their own signature to it. I like that, makes this helmet even cooler. So at this point, we've seen the F-35 up close and learned about some of its unique design and capabilities, but the one thing we haven't seen is this jet in action. Well, that changes right now because this F-35 is about to take off to put on a full flight demonstration so we can see what it's truly capable of. The one thing I do know, it's about to get loud. So you better grab your ear pro. This should be pretty sick. Located at Hill Air Force Base in scenic Northern Utah, it is my distinct pleasure to describe to you today the F-35A Lightning II. The F-35 gives the United States Air Force the power to dominate the sky anytime, anywhere. Lightning zero one, you are cleared for takeoff. Lightning copy is clear to take off. It's showtime. Watch as the F-35 performs a half Cuban eight at a stunning 50 degrees angle of attack. Five demonstration team 
There you have it, the F-35 Lightning II. After watching that demo in person, I can confidently say this jet is impressive. A huge shout out to Hill Air Force Base and the 388 Fighter Wing for making this possible. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next video.